Hi everybody. Welcome back. It's 4th of July. Happy 4th of July everybody. I was uh, scrolling through my YouTube feed the other day and uh, the fella at XXL Chrome Chasing, Kyle, he, was, he had a video on there where he was pulling a GoPro behind his cannonball and uh, salmon were coming up and looking at his lure. I mean, he was getting hits on it too, but uh, he had a lot of fish that just came up, looked at it, and then peeled off left to right. And I got to thinking, I was like, well, what could you do to catch that fish that peeled off? And that got me thinking, well, you would need another lure to the left or right of him as he peeled off that he would see and then hopefully hit as he went by it. So that got me thinking that uh, where, where my lures were in a, in a 3D model behind my boat. And then that led me to uh, looking at what a nine rod spread would be and that's that's what this picture is here it shows you what what most most bigger boats I, I I only run three rods but most bigger boats run a spread that looks like this uh, and you could do it with a couple friends in a boat and I mean you could do this in a 16 foot boat easily uh, you probably wouldn't have a center rigger uh, unless you had an inboard but uh, <clears throat> this is what most most big boats use uh, for trolling. So you got your three downriggers, you got a, two low divers, two high divers, uh, one on each side, and then you would have boards on top of that to the outside. Uh, the boards normally are torpedo divers or weighted weighted line, which could be copper steel or uh, lead core and those tend to be quite long uh, depending on the time depending on the time of the season but usually those are running way 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 back uh, I mean you you're talking 100 yards back on on your boards most of them you know 200 200 300 feet plus uh, so they don't really come into this as much as uh, as these other as these other presentations would, but uh, I guess we we can get to those later. Uh, this is kind of a, the side view here. This is this is kind of what your uh, what it kind of looks like in the water. The uh, I use a. I use a Magnum low diver and an original high diver. That's why the high diver ends up being farther behind the low diver because you need more line to get it back. I'll show you that on the diver chart later. And then you're going to have a little bit more blowback on your center rigger because you got more, it's usually set deeper than your side riggers. And then the top view kind of gives you an idea of where everything is in the water and this is you know this is optimizing against tangles and optimizing to try to get as many lures in a, in a wall the same distance behind the boat um, if that's what if that's what you're trying to do I I you know it may not work I don't know but it also gives you you know it, it'll give you an idea of of where your stuff is I mean it's like you wouldn't want in my opinion you wouldn't want a low diver the lure on the low diver to be you know way I don't, I don't know I, I, I don't know how I don't know what the best way to stack the lures is behind the boat you know but my my guts telling me that a progressive a progressive say say you could do like a inverted pyramid where the ones in the center are tightest up to the boat and then fades off as the higher you go in the water column or you could just try to create a wall say 200 feet behind the boat uh, 
I, I'm not sure which, which I mean, I'm, I'm not sure which would be the most productive. Uh, I guess from looking at his video, I'm thinking the wall is probably better uh, because the fish don't tend to change. The I didn't see him darting up and down. I saw him darting left and right. So in my gut feeling is it's probably better to have them all the same distance behind the boat and that way when he when he darts left or right he can see it as he turns he'll see another lure there so maybe maybe uh sort of an inverted v <laughs> maybe have the v have a v in the middle like your center rigger and then have them taper out uh, if you're targeting say one 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 layer in the column if you're trying to put everything at 60 feet say uh, have them have them taper out from the center on um, both ways uh, I'm not sure what's best but it, this will give you an I what I mean it, it'll give you the opportunity it'll give you the information you need to know where your lures are <laughs> behind the boat how far behind the boat they are, and uh, what the depth of them are. How's that? Okay, the first ones we'll go to are, we'll go to downriggers. Uh, this chart, this chart shows you how much, how much blowback you have a core at 60 feet deep, according to how much cable angle you're observing from your back deck so <clears throat> if you're looking out at your downrigger cable and it's it's going back into the water at at 40 degree angle you can expect about 50 feet of blowback to the ball where your lures attached or the cable just above the ball, depending on how you do it. Um, and then at 30 degrees, you got about 35 feet. 20 degrees, you got about 20 feet. 10 degrees, you got about 10 feet. That's that's what it shows there. Uh, and then it also shows you that to get 60 feet at a 40 degree cable angle, you almost have to have 78 feet of cable out because to make up for the amount of blowback to get that ball down to 60 feet you you have to add a lot but most of us run most of us run our our ball depth off of our depth finder not our cable number on the on the machine but it's something if you don't do that it's something to think about Okay, now we move to divers. Uh, the numbers on the divers are a little, a uh, little misleading. the The number they give you is the no, the amount of line you got out, which is the diagonal, and then they give you the depth the diver is going to be at. But that doesn't necessarily tell you how far from the transom of the boat is if you're trying to make a wall of lures. So you have to input input the depth and the amount of line into a right triangle calculator and then you'll you'll figure out what that top leg is this diagram shows you know the major numbers for a mag diver set at zero going 2.0 to 2.2 over ground uh, so I mean just an example uh, with 50 feet 50 feet of line out it'll be 32 feet back 38 feet deep with 100 feet out it'll be 70 feet back 72 feet deep with 150 feet out it'll be 100, 121 feet back 88 feet deep so you get the idea it's 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 close but doing what we're trying to do and get lures right on top of each other you you almost have to have these pretty much exact numbers you don't want I'm thinking depends on your water clarity but I'm you know I'm trying to get the lures within 
five feet of each other or so on that wall if it's possible <laughs> so they'd be you know to the boat to the boat or away from the boat about five feet and then then you would have your spread distance so you'd have you know whatever whatever the distance is between your low diver and your high diver you know about eight to ten feet and then you'd have eight to ten feet to your downrigger and then you, you see what I'm saying you, you would have anyway uh, so here's a chart uh, it, give me send me a comment and uh, I can uh, well I can just link I'll just link my right triangle calculator in the description below and then if you don't have one you can use it but you if if you're wanting to try to do this you probably you'll probably need to do that for your normal diver settings on your uh, on your divers uh, that's pretty much it for divers uh there, here's the chart the here's the chart for all the divers that I use uh, again this is this is line back off the reel as the as the as the number is not the distance from the transom so that uh, that's just a general rule of thumb that that top number and you know none of this is going to be exact because you're going to get some line bow in the water and and it's not going to be exactly perfect that's why I'm giving myself five feet or so in between you know I'm, I'm guessing that it's not going to, you're never going to get it perfect I don't think but you can get it dang close be my guess Okay, well, I hope that wasn't too boring. <laughs> uh, it was a little dry and not very active, active on the pitcher front. But, you know, the what we were going after here was, I think, uh, I know when I started out, I just threw stuff in the water. I didn't really think about where it was ending up in the water column and, and uh, what what the fish were seeing when they were swimming by the lures and and watching that video just triggered something in my mind that got me thinking uh, i really i really wanted to figure out and know where each of my lures was in relationship to the other ones in the water column um probably i, I don't know if you'll pick up more bites but i mean using using this these techniques you could you could theoretically if the say the thermal climb was at 60 feet uh, you could line up you could line up all your your high low downriggers you could line them up in a line at 60 foot deep uh, same distance back off the back of the boat so they'd all seven be just swimming side by side all the way across and you know they'd be within a couple feet of each other <clears throat> I don't know if that's beneficial or not uh, my guess is that you know if you went by a fish and he saw freaking seven lures going by him all in a row like that he might just I don't know it might just freak him out who knows uh, and I would I don't I'm guessing you probably probably wouldn't want to put rotators on anything but maybe the high divers on the outside. Uh, I think you could probably get away with one set of one set of di one set of rotators, probably on the on the high diver, and then one one rotator on the on the. Uh, well, no, you couldn't. You're going to be so back, far back on the center rigger. You wouldn't want to put a rotator on it. Probably just, probably just uh, flashers on the high divers, because uh, everything's going to be so tight. It, it depends on how wide the beam of your boat is. But my guess is that uh, you know you'd be you'd be stretched for room side to side in that in that in that group. 
anyway uh, the math worked out this way uh, to set all the lures at the same exact distance back off the boat you'd have your high diver it would be a uh, 124 or a, a mag diver on setting number three it'd be 125 out it would be running at 63 feet deep and would be uh, around 128 feet back. You'd have a low diver. Uh, that would be in a 107 or an original diver, setting number one. Uh, it'd be 125 out also. It'd be running at about 65 feet deep. And uh, it would also be about 127, 128 back. Uh, your left and right downriggers assuming they're running at about a 30 degree angle uh, you'd have them about 98 feet back off the ball that would put you right in that 130 range and then your center rigger uh, I'm guessing it's probably got a fish hawk on it so it's going to drag more uh, you're going to be about 80 feet back on that one and that should put you put you right in the money on all all seven rods should be right down right at 60 between between 60 and 65 uh, just every single one of them running in a line right at 60 feet or right at about 60 feet <laughs> I don't know if you want to try it but um, that was the calculations and using this math you can you can build any pyramid shape you can build you, you can you know do groups it, you can do whatever whatever you want to do uh, but it gives you an idea of where your stuff is when you're pulling it and that way you don't end up with a lure say way up inside uh, hiding behind a flasher or something like that at least you get an idea that uh, you don't have uh, and you know it might reduce your tangles where you don't have a rotator rotating right into the side of a, a line that's that's going by another one which is a common cause of tangles uh, and it'll also allow it'll make you feel a little bit more comfortable setting tighter I think because you'll know exactly where your stuff is hope you have a wonderful rest of your 4th of July and uh, I'm gonna take a break this hurt my head <laughs> y'all take care <clears throat>